Okay, so previously we did an income statement. Now we're going to move on to the next statement in our series, which is a statement of owner's equity. Now the statement of owner's equity also has a pretty simple formula that we can follow, which is beginning owner's equity plus contributions plus net income minus withdrawals equals ending owner's equity. So just like with our income statement, we are going to start with the company's name at the top. And the next one is going to say what kind of statement it is. In this case, it's a statement of owner's equity. And this last piece is going to tell us when this happens. So is it a snapshot or is it for a specific period from start to finish? Well, this is going to tell us the change in owner's equity during the period. So just like we did with the income statement, we are going to need to use for the month ended January 31st. Now, before we start bringing over numbers, I'm going to talk about general layout for this. Um, using this formula, let's take a look at how that might look. Uh, so we start with our beginning owner's equity. So Christopher Knowles, comma, capital as of January 1st. And then after that, we would add in any additional investments. This could be investment during the month. Um, I'm just going to use additional contributions here. Um, now, after that, we're going to add in net income. Like that, this could also be net income for the month. And then this is going to typically give us a number. Here, let's add in some X's for now so you can see how this might be formatted. So we'll have an underline here. And this is going to be those two numbers added together. Now, once we have that information, we can deduct out withdrawals. So less withdrawals, that less signifies that we are going to subtract. And then it would be time to do some additional math there. So let's do another underline. Oh, and I am blind. One second, that is a double border, not a single border like what we want. There we go. Okay, now that we have less withdrawals, we'll be able to find the increase in owner's equity during the period. So that will go over here. And once we had that information, then we could do Christopher Knowles comma capital as of the end of the month. This plus this added together. And we did math there. And remember, just like with our income statement using those double lines, we have another double line down here because this is the final result of our statement. There we go. Now, Let's analyze what we do have. Okay, do we have Christopher Knowles capital as of the first of the month? Yes, we do have that. However, keep in mind, it's not this 50,000. Um, for Christopher, this was the first month of operations. He just started this company. So Christopher is actually starting with a capital balance of zero. So this would actually be a zero for Christopher. Now, any additional contributions, that would be his contribution during the year, his investment within his own company. So that is where that 50000 would go. Now, for his net income, you can grab the net income from the income statement. That's why the income statement always comes first. It's a flow of information. So this 4600 has to get brought down to the statement of owner's equity. Now, typically, this is where we would add everything together and then less withdrawals. However, let's take a look at our drawing account here. We have a balance of zero in our drawing account, so we actually do not need to put in this withdrawal section. We can take this out. However, I did want you to see what this might look like if you did have withdrawals. So let's go ahead and let's go back and let's take that out for now. Okay, so we started with zero. 50,000 in contributions, 4,600 in net income. Let's go ahead and let's get our border. There we go. Now let's do some math. Let's find the increase in owner's equity, which would be 50,000 plus that net income. There we go. And now our last step would be to add the beginning capital to that increase. 0 plus 54,600, which means that the ending balance in Christopher Knowles' capital account as of the end of that month is $54,600. And remember, just like we did previously with that um, income statement, the last result should be 
double lined at the very bottom. We'll see how this works for the balance sheet next. So keep in mind one thing you're going to want to really master here is how formatting works. Um, making a list and then totaling it over in the right hand column and that sometimes um, something might have a balance of zero so you just have to adjust for that. So keep that in mind as you're running through some of those examples in your homework and next we'll go ahead and take a look at the balance sheet and how we can grab some of this information and move it down to the next statement. So in the meantime, happy studying. We'll see you soon.